Network is a 1976 film directed by the glorious Sidney Lumet, who famously directed 12 Angry Men, but of course he's directed a lot of films, a lot of classics like Dog Day Afternoon, and even less recognised but great films like Death Trap. But in 1976, he brought Network to the world, which may not be his best work or most decorated or popular work, but it is for sure his most timeless work. So a basic breakdown of the film is that we follow a TV network in 1975 with abysmal ratings. They elect to fire their news anchor, Howard Beale, who upon learning this decides he's gonna tell the world live on air that he's planning to kill himself on the news. Of course, he's fired immediately and taken off air, but as it turns out, the attention this garners spikes their ratings massively, to the point of them giving Beale his own show where they basically frame him as a modern day messiah. He goes on every night and screams at the audience, he plays up this angry man persona. And now spoilers for the ending, but eventually this causes the network trouble and eventually he's subject to an assassination live on air orchestrated by the network. Now this film has so many messages and themes about modern day messiahs and at the time, the TV generation. Faye Dunaway plays Diana Christensen, who was the one who had the idea of putting Beale on this angry man formatted show. She's also the character who is constantly made an example of by the film. She's a critique on a whole generation, which was the first generation to have grown up with television. The movie is constantly talking about how people in real life are so desensitised to everything. Murder, war, famine, struggle, injustice, it's all on the same level as relationship drama, scripted conflict, love, alcohol, drugs. It's all just entertainment. Now, this point is very poignant for the time, of course, but I think that message has only gotten stronger over time, especially for people my age, the older Gen Zs like me who are, you know, 22 or 21 and up and we're the first generation to not know a life away from the internet, a life without social media. When I was a teenager, the way I would flirt with girls was over BBM and Skype calls. It completely changed lives and how we act in social settings. And to say the cliche, we're more connected than ever and everybody is lonelier than ever. But I'm not here on some fucking boomer shit. I think the internet is glorious and probably the best invention ever made. It's an endless resource of connectivity, knowledge, entertainment, the spaces for all kinds of people into all kinds of things. It revolutionized every industry in unimaginable ways and its existence is genuinely a blessing. But as we all know, it isn't all amazing. It can be a breeding ground of hate and fear mongering. Social media is a marketing tool for yourself. And there's a speech in Network where the ex-news division president Max is talking to Diana and he's explaining that because she thinks everything is a story, life is a script, she has no focus on what life really is. He is her only glimpse into reality because every other social connection she has is shadowed by numbers, ratings, ideas, and the network. He's the only thing that's real and she simply isn't able to understand that. She doesn't know how to properly deal with actual interaction. All he asks of her is to love him, flaws and all, and she just doesn't know how to. Because there isn't a script for love, there isn't a playwright in the world that could write and articulate real love. Just a facsimile of it, and when you're raised by the TV, that's your truth, that's your world, your fashion, your beliefs, your personality, but it cannot prepare you for the unpredictability of human emotion. And in the modern world where everything is posted somewhere, every act, a baby shower, a wedding, a birthday, a date, every time you take a walk, every movie you see, every interaction you have, it is making your life a spectacle. Something strictly for an audience, it makes every single piece of food you eat a performance. And that changes you as a person. You know, we're a generation of attention-seeking 
whores, me included. I do YouTube for fuck's sake. I beg for comments at the end of every video. I crave the interaction. And though I don't use any social media besides Twitter other than obviously this, which I rarely ever mention my real life on, it's all still a performance of some kind. This voice I use to present these videos isn't really how I talk in real life. It's just my way of speaking proper, being accessible, trying to capture a wider audience and make myself more palatable for you. Because we're not just attention seeking whores for the sake of it. We're not attention seeking whores because the attention is so widely abundant. Because it isn't. We're attention seekers because the internet has destroyed millions of people's self-esteem. People judge themselves on their interactions on social media. Our experiences are currency. Our life is a commodity that we share. People compare themselves to others constantly, despite knowing they're comparing themselves to gods. They're comparing themselves to something they can't achieve. They're posting on the same platform as models, superstars, singers, footballers, rappers, actors. And we wonder why we're a generation of anxiety riddled depressed pods of emptiness. We're all just trying to achieve something that isn't real, that doesn't exist. COVID-19 and lockdowns and things like that have done some irreparable damage to a lot of people's psyches and they haven't recovered. I mean, I went to the cinema just the other day to go and see the dive and the couple in front of me spoke the entire time. They recorded entire scenes on their phones and there was no shame in it. And this isn't an isolated event, this happens so often. I mean, if you just go on Twitter after a movie comes out, you'll see a full two minute clip of it recorded on phones everywhere. This has become normalized because a lot of people don't even know how to act in public anymore. But this is just one layer of network and how that message has evolved because we haven't even mentioned the main theme of the film which is the modern day messiah. Beale is worshipped and beloved for what people thought was telling the truth. You know, because at the time people idolised the guy on the 21 inch screen. The TV was the gospel, so the man preaching it must be the messiah. This has only gotten worse in a modern context because we don't just have one or two anymore. With the vastness of the internet, we have so many false prophets across the board for every kind of person. There's the Andrew Tates of the world who make wannabe alpha male incels feel valid for their views on women which are rooted in deep misogyny and teenage boys are the target demographic of this gospel. We have the Ricky Gervaises and the Bill Mars of the world and they preach, you know, everything is bullshit, I'm counterculture, they're trying to counsel me, I'm just speaking the truth, I'm saying it as it is and they're not, they're just cunts. We have Trump who promised an America that never existed to a whole bunch of people who were tricked into believing it did. We have music artists, actors, political leaders, YouTubers, influencers who trick people into believing their bullshit. And what's crazy is Howard Beale is clearly having a mental breakdown due to the downfall of his life and career and the people quite literally running the show are using it for clout, exploiting his condition for ratings and investments, outrage sells, fear sells and we do this still, Kanye West, a genius musician and I mean that, clearly mentally unwell and has been going through a lot of trauma and complex mental health issues and people don't seem to care. He continues to have a platform. At the height of it all, the slavery was a choice stuff, the onstage outburst, the public divorce, what happened? He had a Netflix documentary drop that was insanely successful. He was diagnosed with bipolar and it became an album cover and a selling point. But in the end, when these messiahs are no longer preaching what we want them to and their so-called truth no longer sells, they're killed. Now in Bill's case that was literal, but in the internet age it's getting cancelled or people just simply not liking you anymore. This is not exactly the same, but the fall of Taika Waititi in the public's favour should be studied. One bad movie destroyed his entire perception as a filmmaker, because that's who we are as a hive. It's true what Beal said, the person is dead, the individual does not matter anymore, we're a collective who make collective decisions and act as a collective. And what happens when Beal is killed live on air? Nothing. It's reported on but it's drowned out by everything else happening because people are desensitised to something that insane and everything is just happening at the same time and no more is that true than now. 
There is so much noise constantly and there is so much terror and fear in the world and it has equal space to live as absolute nonsense, which is fine and valid. We need escape from the real world and from the horrors of reality, but we are so used to our forms of escapism that we're simply unequipped for the horrors of reality. Coronavirus was an incredible mess across the board, especially in the UK, and it really shouldn't have been, not to the extent it was, and it's because people were socially unequipped. They were selfish, entitled, scared, and stupid, and it led to a lot more pain and suffering than necessary. And I know this video didn't seem like it was much about network, but I make all of these rants to say every single pocket of commentary network has to offer on TV and the generation it raised applies tenfold to the internet and social media and the generation that raised. The points are only made more clearer and more painful now. And like I said, I don't think the internet and social media is inherently evil. I be on that shit because it isn't evil. But we are all aware it has some undeniable social effects that we can't even begin to understand yet. The studies that need to be done haven't even begun and haven't even been thought of yet. And I'm not really saying anything original, we all know this, but I'm trying to say how impressive it is that a film about society and the impact of a technological advancement of the time made in 1976 is still relevant and even more so nearly 50 years later. But that's just me. Have you seen Network? If so, let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think of this video. I read every single comment and reply to as many as possible. And whether it's a timeless Sydney Lumet film or not, as always, keep watching movies.